G'day. We're going to look into this 2-2 16-in-1 universal docking station. It is a USB-C dock. It's able to drive up to triple external displays. It does run off display link drivers, so you need to install that before you connect this up. We're going to have a look at the temperatures as well as the noise of it, and also we're going to test this out with a Windows laptop as well as a MacBook Pro. The build construction of this docking station is pretty much all aluminium all the way through and you see quite a lot of fins on each side so it means it is passably cool. The operating temperature of the 2216M1 dock is about 30 degrees Celsius on the surface of the front and also around where the ports is is about maximum of 31 degrees Celsius. Now the, the dock has been running for over an hour and a half running triple displays. I do have video playback as well as playing games on those free displays. And it is passively cool so there is no noise coming out of this dock at all. And just to give you a reference point, your average hand is anywhere between 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. So this dock pretty much is not even warm it is pretty much cold so it has very good operating temperatures coming out of this dock we're going to test out the 22 dock with a windows laptop and a macbook pro in the different scenarios behind me i've got three external monitors i've got a 34 inch ultra widescreen monitor which is connected to the dock by hmi cable and i've got also two 27 4k inch monitors which are connected to the dock by display port and right here, I've got a uh, Windows laptop, which is the Dell Position 5470. Now, I've got a review coming up very soon. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description below. But this does have a discrete graphics, which is probably more useful if you're trying to drive a gaming monitor, which has more than 60 hertz refresh rate for the monitor. But if you've got 30 or 64 hertz for the refresh rate, it doesn't really matter if you've got a discrete graphics or not. But it does help, of course. But most of the time with display link, it's really just encoding using the processor to help it out. So let's further ado, let's get this thing connected up. So I'll connect the 2.2 dock with this Windows laptop. There we go. I can hear it's just found it and I can hear it connect. And now I've also already got the display link drivers installed on this Windows laptop just to save us time. I can see it's saying at the moment straight away you can see it's saying it's battery saving mode because this position 5470 does require 130 watts and this dock is only able to produce 65 watts so it's going to be on slow charge but I would more than likely be connecting another one but most other business laptops will be able to do 65 watts most of the time unless you've got discrete graphics like this one does. I can see it's in extended mode, so let's just bring this thing up. Let's just double check that. I do have a wireless keyboard and mouse connected this to this computer. And we have bricked this up so I can safely see that it is in extended mode here, which is absolutely fantastic. And I do have this monitor currently. It is set to 4K, which is good. And the scaling is a little bit high just to make it easier so you can actually see what's happening on this monitor. And we can also see on this one here, it is set to the 3440 by 1440. So it is reading ultra wide on the 34. And the one behind me is set to 3840 by 2140. So it is at 4K as well. And we're going to also just tell people because some people have been asking me about the audio. Now this does have an audio jack and just to switch to the audio jack because some people say they don't have sound. You just need to make sure you're in Windows. Now this is running Windows 11, so you do need to have an extra step in here. So click on the Windows volume bar, and then in the volume slider, you just got to go down to the little arrow key, and then you'll get all the different speakers options that are set. Now because of HDMI port and Display Port, you do get those options that the monitors can drive speakers as well. Now the to drive it from either the speakers that's connected to the dock, you need to select speakers and in brackets, you'll see USB audio. Now that is the way you actually switch to those ones there. And anything above that, at the moment, I've got the internal speakers of the laptop and also I've got this Dell, which is able to produce sound because it does have a speaker on it as well too. So 
we'll just have uh, on the USB speakers. Now, we're gonna test out the other scenario here, which is basically like closing the lid and hopefully just drive only the free displays. Let's have hopefully get that up. But it's actually gone to sleep, so we might as well test another one out, which is can I wake this computer up with just the mouse? So let's see if we can do that. Yeah, so I've just clicked the mouse. And let's see if it actually, I'll just quickly just move the mouse and, and click away. Oh, it has waken up. I can definitely hear one beep. So that's good. So we have got that now running, waking up with the keyboard. And more than likely, it's the same with the keyboard. So I'll just do that just in a way, just to, so you can see. So I'll put this thing to sleep. I'll just try that again. I think I've moved the mouse as I put it to sleep. So now that's gone to sleep. So you can ski signals, great stuff. So I'm just gonna press enter or just do some keyboard bashing on the keyboard and hopefully that should hopefully wake it up. I can definitely see it's waking it up. Fantastic there. So that's the Windows computer. We're going now to test the Tutu dock with a MacBook Pro. Now I've got a 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. So it does require a little bit more extra power than normal. So this does require 92 watts of power. And if you've got a MacBook 13 inch MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, then this dock will be able to charge without having any issues. I am expecting some sort of maybe warning message to say this is on slow charge or not. So I've just connected that up and we'll see if this is able to drive free displays. Now I have it's already installed the display link drivers and display link manager from the website. So if you need to install that, I have also created a video how to install Display Link Manager and Drivers, uh, and I'll put a link in the description below. That also just shows you how to guide you through that, as well as troubleshooting how to install. That you do need to have the Display Link Drivers and Manager installed before you connect this dock up to make it work for either Windows or also Mac. Now I can see we've got this flying with three displays. Now here's the big test, is it in extended mode, so I'll, I'll just go to displays. And oh, we already are in extended mode, so I can definitely see. Now I've also made this one larger, so we can see this a little bit. So we are moving between the different displays. It's just great to see, so it is in extended mode. Now I was gonna go to display settings very quickly to have a look at each display. So in the 34, we are reading uh, 3440 by 1440. So that's at its proper high resolution, which is good to see. And we'll have a look at the middle one, which is this one here, the LG Ultrafine. And again, I'm going to see if I can just bring this up to low resolution just so we can see this. Uh, and, and it is already in low resolution. I think I've already done this already, just so we can see this. Uh, but we do have the 3840 by 2160 option. So that is means this can do 4K. And also we're gonna to go to the one behind me, the other LG, and that one again can do 3840 by 2160. So it is 4K as well. So it is all available there. And I'm gonna just quickly bring also the power. Now with the power, it is currently on battery, but it will say power source is on power adapter. So it is, because it's not doing a much load at the moment, it's not really need to charge it up, but it's not really charging the battery and it's just using purely from the dock at the moment. So again, like I said, this requires 92 watts to actually charge it up to make it run, uh, but it is at the moment just pulling directly from the docking station without having to drain the battery, which is kind of good for a 14 inch. Uh, again, if you've got the 14 inch with just the M1 or the M2 uh, for the MacBook Air, and that will be fine. You should be able to drive that directly from this docking station in a way. Now we're gonna test out the next part of it, which is basically, we're just gonna close the lid. And it is seeing the free displays, which is good to see. And we're in extended mode. I think this has just gone to funky mode. I just haven't got this arranged correctly, but that's all there. So that's, that's it is working there, which is good to see. So let's gonna turn this computer to sleep. So I'm gonna just turn this to sleep at the moment. I'm just gonna see because of the monitor is just hidden. So I'm just gonna put this thing to sleep now. And we're gonna see if we can wake this computer up with the wireless keyboard and mouse. So i am gone to sleep. I'm just gonna move it around. Just click a few things. We'll see if this is able to wake it up. It looks like it's waking up, which is good. So that's woken up. Now it's just gone down there. So awesome. So that has waken it up just using the wireless keyboard and mouse. Fantastic.
Vertutu 16 on one dock is beautifully labeled, has a good build construction, and also has a good selection of ports. And it also has a very good operating temperatures, quite low is what I say, and also it is a passively cool dock as well. So it runs practically silent. Now I've also seen from my testers, it is able to drive triple displays on Windows as well as a Mac. So it is quite universal and it does only produce 65 watts. It would be nice if it can do more. That's probably what I would say as a good improvement for the next revision. Hope you find this video informative or enjoyed. If you did, even to support my channel, smash that like button for me. If you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And also I have membership if you want to support me further by clicking that join button. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll catch you in the next video.